Courtney, a 29-year-old mother of three, is in need of a makeover. She told me she needed help but didn't know where to start. Does that sound all too familiar? I thought to myself, how could I not help her? Get ready to see what I came up with. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps a giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. I would like kind of a more modern type look. Um, I feel like I've had the same look my whole life. <laughs> and as the fashion changes, I try and incorporate what's cool, but um, I don't think I take everything into consideration. I just, you know, I would like a stylist to just kind of say, here, put this on, and then go from there, decide if it looks good or not. Today we're going to be talking about the fabulous world of fashion and beauty. But later in the episode we'll be meeting Courtney, a mother of three who was looking, well needless to say, a little drab. So we decided to give her a makeover from top to toe with my great friends at Marinello School of Beauty. And now she's looking fantastic. But before we get to that, let me introduce you to my first guest, Nick and Heidi, our resident fashion <laughs> stylist. Hi hey guys. Hi. So Heidi, why is it important to dress for your body shape? It's important to dress for your body shape because not every trend, which is what most people tend to dress their body for, um, works on every body shape. We're not all size zeros, you know. Really? So, no. <laughs> so we need to, you know, you need to dress, you know, for to, to show off your assets, to show off the mm -hmm. good parts of you, yeah. and to cover up, you know, our troubled spots. So it's being realistic. It's being, being realistic. realistic and knowing your body. How do you know your body? You know what? Yeah, it's. You kind of just have to try different things to know what really works on your body. And to what Nick said, hiding your tr what hides your trouble areas, what enhances your assets, so that you really find the things that look good for you. Nick, as stylist, what are some of the main things that people seem to th not think it's a major issue? So you know. Yeah. You know, I, I think a lot of people think it's not a major issue on just some cardinal rules. You know, um, you know, if it, if the pants are too long and they're going to be dragging on the floor, don't wear them. Get mm -hmm. them hemmed up. Make sure it looks, you know, nice, tight, and proper. Uh, me and Heidi were talking about this earlier, but to find your body type, um, that's the key thing. You need to be honest with yourself, and the biggest thing is you need to try on everything. And you know what? A lot of times, women get hung up on the size that's on the tag. Yeah. Nobody knows what size that is, but you. Okay. S unless it's too tight. Okay, let's just, you know, find out a few of the fashion myths. Okay, <laughs> let's put them to rest. You can't wear white after Labor Day. Er, that's wrong. wrong. Is it? Yes. Wrong. So why does everyone tell me when I moved here, no white after Labor Day? It's an old rule. It's 1955 all over again. <laughs> we are not in 1955. So, you know, me and Heidi were talking about this the other day. So, I mean, you come out in the winter and you're going to see these beautiful pea coats in white. Yeah. Um, you're going to see, last year, the big trend was to have all white denim jeans in the winter with your UGG style boots. So things like this are really pushing. You can wear white, but you want to use fabrics for the season that you're in. Okay. So you don't want to wear linen pants in the winter. Of course not. Well, that's right. just silly, but people do, don't <laughs> they? So. You can't mix neutrals. You can mix neutrals. Uh, wrong. <laughs> so Again? Again. Yeah. Oh so gosh. definitely, <laughs> it's your tones and also your colors of neutrals. So you're going to mix in a nude. Um, Heidi's actually wearing it right now. So she's got you this got lighter white? nude on top and then she's got a darker nude tone in her skirt. Mm -hmm. So absolutely you can mix your neutrals. I love that. Mm -hmm. I, I always thought that it washes you out, but you're saying mix it in with other things. Mix it in with you other things. Break it. a color would yeah. help too. Okay. Absolutely. Metallics are big. Mm -hmm. That's happening right now yes. and will be happening for the next year, of course. They say you can't mix the metals. What's with that? Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> Tasteful. So you're not going to mix gold <laughs> and silver, but are you going to mix in a little bit of, you know, a, a, a pewter with a brush bronze mm -hmm. and it's going to have details through it? Absolutely. Okay. Just don't go I'm going to stand up. I want to show you something. I've got my shoe on and a matching brown belt. True? Should we be doing that or should we not be? It depends. Um, okay. Structured pieces like what you're wearing, yes. it's very match to a T. Yep. Um, other days, um, I'm wearing a red belt today, yeah. and I'm wearing no red except for the little detailing in my hanker scar. Okay. Matt and his shoes are a neutral and tone. And my shoes are a neutral color. And I have neutral shoes and a black belt. So I'm old fashioned. No. You're, you have a professional attire on, so right. you do want to match when it gotcha. comes to that. See, I'm professional. <laughs> so uh, you can't mix patterns. You know, I would say on that one, 
It's it's once again one of those iffy rules on it. Really? Um, if it's done tasteful. <laughs> now, you know, to a key eye, you can be done tasteful, but I would say work on this one, people, because a lot of people just throw it together and that's where it looks a little risque. Yeah, I agree. You don't want to just, I mean, you can look through the magazines and then the average person will just be like, oh, great, now I can mix patterns. You have to be just very careful with the patterns you do mix okay. together. You don't want to do too bold mm -hmm. um, because then you're just overwhelming. This is something that I get asked a lot around the world when I've been doing these types of shows before, is tall women shouldn't <coughs> wear high heels. They can and wear high heels. Another I agree. Yes, yeah, so my they best should. friend is from Sweden. She's six one, and yeah. she'll put on a four inch, five inch pump. Really? You know, yeah, and it's it just depends. Confidence. She's Amazon. Com <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, <laughs> yes. So it's just your confidence it's level. Confidence How level. confident you are with you. I, is a, a pump better than a stiletto? when you're that tall or it, it's just what it's you just can pull off? It's what you can pull off. It depends on the shoe, the outfit um, okay. and where you're going. Do you think fashion's about attitude rather than what's in style? Yes. Absolutely. It's 90% confidence, 10% what you're wearing. You have to be comfortable in it and not comfortable from like a sweatpants standpoint, but comfortable in, in yourself. You need to have the confidence to be able to pull it off. That you're secure enough in your own skin mm -hmm. wearing it. That if someone says, oh, that's ugly, you know that, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I know I look 10 times better in this, <laughs> than, but maybe not everyone can pull it off. I have to say, well, <laughs> sometimes it's best to tell the friend that she, they're not looking that great with that sweater on. I agree. I yes. agree. <laughs> I think you have to tell somebody. You got to be honest. You have to be honest because then they're going to go out there and then everybody's going to be like, mm, I don't know what she's wearing. But, but we all know that person too, that they somehow can rock anything. Yes. Like okay. I've got one of those girlfriends that can put on the ugliest sweater and somehow it looks fantastic on her. <laughs> Do we hate her? <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, first of all, I wanted to take you over. And Nick, our resident stylist, as you know, who you've just met, is going to give us some quick tips on the different ways you can wear a scarf. Today, I'm going to show you different ways you can wear a scarf that's really quick and simple. First of all, an infinity scarf. These guys are great. It's called an infinity scarf because it has no end. It's one long scarf. So what you're going to do, you're just going to place this simply over your head, wrap it into a figure eight, pull it back over. These usually come out in winter, so this is a great look if you've got a great pea coat, something a little bit more layering pieces. But on another day, if you decide to trade it up, just pull it longwise. You're going to just flatten out the scarf. It's going to come over your bust, and this is a great way to pull it into Bohemian. Next up, we're going to go with the cowboy scarf. It's a simple square scarf like this, one of my favorites. It's your most utility out of all your scarves. So what you're going to do, you're going to lay it flatwise. You're going to grow corner to corner, and you're going to get a triangle out of it. Then you're going to simply pull that triangle up to the top. Give it one, two, three wraps. It'll become one straight lace scarf. But then if you want to give it a different look on another day, all you're going to do is just find that seam, pull it back into that corner, and then pull this over. You're going to pull it over your shoulders. It's going to have a fun little drape right there. Now, a lot of people say, well, hey, it keeps falling down. So quick little tip, find your ring, grab that ring. The end tails of your scarf, you're going to gather them both together and you're gonna just push this through the ring. That way, in the back now, it's gonna hold your scarf without worrying about it falling in the front. If you wanna give it a little security tie, just give it a simple little tie, but that ring is gonna hold everything together. And there's my tips on tying off a scarf. Coming up after the break, we'll meet Courtney, who decided she was in need of some help creating a new, more youthful appearance. Nick and Heidi team up with Lindsay from the Marinello School of Beauty to give her a complete fashion and hair makeover. Be sure to check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show. Stay up to date on the Younger You Challenge and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. My name is Courtney Hewish. I'm 29 years old. My biggest problem area that concerns me is um, my middle section. That's the biggest thing when I try, you know, with the, the lower cut style that's going on now, I feel like, you know, I can't hide it as much. I have a hard time making decisions by myself. I usually have to take someone else shopping with me to get a second opinion because sometimes if I think something looks good, it really doesn't. Courtney, I love the dress. Where would you have worn a dress like this to? Um, I would think of like a company party okay. type occasion. 
So Courtney, <clears throat> tell me about your troubled areas. What are you concerned with? Um, my biggest concern would be my midsection. Um, I have three kids under five, so still trying to lose the baby Maybe. weight from that. <laughs> and then Courtney, would you have made the dress casual like we did? Um, I would not have thought of that okay. as doing it myself, just seeing it, but um, I love it. So we did a mermaid cut. What it does, it's tight through the hips and thighs. It pulls out your hips and thighs, and then it shoots through the bottom to avoid some troubled areas. We added the belt because you were concerned with your midsection, and it draws the eye away um, and slims you down. And then last but not least, we did give it this low plunge neckline, so it kind of redirects the eyes instead of just looking through the middle. I feel like I've had the same look my whole life, <laughs> and as the fashion changes, I try and incorporate what's what's cool, but um, I don't think I take everything into consideration. If someone else makes the decision, it makes me a little more secure, and that way if someone doesn't like it, I can blame it on whoever picked it out. <laughs> I don't have any fashion sense at all. <laughs> Courtney, look at you, you look amazing. So the first look, we dressed it down. Now we went the opposite direction and totally dressed it up. How do you feel? I love it. Do you it's... feel like a mama three? No, I feel sassy and sexy. We did dressed up leggings with this faux leather panel. Um, it's great, it pulls in your hips, your thighs, your butt. Um, you know, then we've got this really blousey shirt that really pulls in. With the embellishment and the shape of it, it, it really is just a slimming look for you. And what I love the most is we added this leather jacket. It's that crop look that if this was skin tight, it wouldn't look that great. But with this flowy shirt, it gives it that perfect look. Cuts your proportions in half, so it makes you look taller and it makes your legs look leaner and your, and your tummy toned in. Those heels are amazing, and we tied the silver together great with your silver studs. Nick, I think she's ready to go out in the town. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, we have <laughs> pegged this. We've nailed this one. I think so. I'm really excited to get a whole new hairdo, and I don't really know what to expect, but I'm excited to see what will happen. I have really thick hair. Sometimes it could be good, sometimes it could be bad. I mostly have had long hair um, throughout most of my life. I just one day decided to chop it off about a year and a half ago, and I chopped about 12 inches off, and it was pretty drastic, but I, I liked it, and I've kind of kept it short since then, but I like long or short. I've colored it a few times in the past. I did do a, a temporary black dye once. It wasn't very temporary. It actually took a lot to get out. I really don't have anything that I'm absolutely opposed to, except for maybe like shaving it bald. That would not be good. <laughs> Courtney, how are you today? Pretty good, how are you doing? Good, I'm Lindsay, I'm the Artistic Director with Marinella Schools of Beauty, and we're ready for a change. All right. Yeah? I'm pretty much open for anything. I do like my bangs. Um, that's probably the biggest thing I like about my hair right now. You Beauty. are open to go even shorter? Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe yep. a little more sassy. Yeah. Yes? But easy to do in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually I don't show the color book, but I want to get an idea of your, what you think of as cool and warm and kind of colors that you're more drawn to. Okay. Have you ever been that light before? No, I've had highlights, but never completely. That, All over, that blonde? Light. Yeah. Okay. What if we did a, a pop of something like this? How would you feel about that? Um, I would like that, yeah. yeah. I, I like a, you I like, like a red. The red copper, uh -huh. red, you're yeah. open to that? Yep, so maybe not so much that. That might be a little too much, but. What um, about in this family? Um, I, that one's too bluish, but I would, I'd be fine with any of the others. Any of these? Mm -hmm. Even yeah. this? Yeah. You'd be willing to go that vibrant? Yeah. Since we do have quite a round face shape, mm -hmm. thinking of really opening up the face, going a bit shorter, sassy, easy to do in the morning, mm -hmm. um, take some of this bulk out. Okay. And as far as the color, you have beautiful blue eyes. So I think something rich in, in depth and dimension to really open up your eyes and draw attention to your eyes. Well, I am up for anything. The big plus would be quick and easy to do in the mornings, but if I have to spend a little more time, uh, I think I can make that work. 
but I'm just really excited to see what's what's going to happen and what we can can do and boost my confidence. As Lindsay and her team work on Courtney's new look, let's take a look at the six basic face shapes. There is oval, long, round, square, heart and diamond. Courtney's face is quite round. People sometimes associate round faces with chubby cheeks, but that isn't always the case. If you have a round face, your cheekbones are just the widest part of your face and your jaw will be curved. For someone with a round face like Courtney, it's best to keep a little bit of your hair in front of your ear if you have long hair. This visually stops the width of your face. A deep part on the side can help change the focal point of the length of your face. Short hairstyles often look great with round faces. If you're comfortable in your own skin and not insecure about the way you look, don't be afraid, just chop off that hair. If you do decide to go short, make sure to give your hair some texture. Sleek short haircuts on a round face can make it appear more round. The texture will help diffuse the roundness. Now let's check back in with Lindsay and her team from Marinello. Coming up after the break, Lindsay from Marinello School of Beauty will give you some great pointers on creating the perfect smoky eye and we'll see the final result of Courtney's top to toe makeover. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Step one to create the perfect smoky eye, you will need to prime the lid with a concealer. Step two, you will use a skin tone shadow to use as the base for the lid. Step three, you will take a dark shadow with an angled brush and line the lid. Step four, you'll take a medium shadow and use a short blending brush to blend at the lash line. Step five, you'll take a separate blending brush with no product on it and begin to blend up from the lash line out to the outer corner. And we're just blending up from the lash line to the center of the lid. Step six, you'll take a liner pencil and trace over the line you made with the shadow to darken and deepen the line. Step seven, we're gonna take the medium color that we used again and create a V in the corner. Then taking our separate blending brush with no product to blend that again up from the lid, the lash line, to the center of the lid. Blending towards the outer corner to give the illusion of a larger eye. Step eight, you will continue to blend all the colors together, including the bottom lash line. The big tip here is to continue blending until there are no harsh lines or lines of demarcation.
Well, welcome back. We've been joined in studio by Lindsay, the Artistic Director at Marinello School of Beauty. Lindsay, I wanted to ask you one quick question before we get into what we've done with mm -hmm. Courtney. When, you, when men and women come into the studios to see you and they want to have a change, what's the one thing that you ask them to do before they come in? Trey, something we suggest before you come into the salon, especially if you're looking for a new look, yeah. bring pictures, look through magazines, get some ideas of things that you like. Yeah. Um, know what you don't want. Know what you absolutely Huge. don't like. Yep. And, you know, be open. Trust your stylist and know that she knows what's best for you. Okay. I'm a little bit nervous because I was, when we were chatting to Courtney to begin with, she was dressing a little bit older. Her style was a little bit older as well with the hair. So I'm really excited to see what you've actually done. Hey, Courtney, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it's, it's Rihanna. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel fun. I mean, it's a huge change. Yeah. And that's kind of what I said when we sat down to do my hair was I just, you know, I said, just do what you want, really. And um, this is what came out and it's fun. I've always kind of thought about a hairstyle like this, but yeah. I've never dared to do it. Why haven't you dared to do it? I, I didn't know if I could pull it off mm. and I didn't want to, if I didn't like it, then I would... <laughs> You know, I wouldn't have anywhere else to go with it, but I just put myself into their hands and let them do it, and it turned out great, and I love it. I feel fresh and funky. Okay, tell me, what did your family think when you walked through the front door? Um, the first thing my five-year-old said was, Mommy, what did you do to your hair? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's getting a little uh, taking used to. Yeah. Um, when my parents saw me, they were like, oh, they cut it a lot. <laughs> it's, um, Courtney, it's shaved. It is. Let's be real here. <laughs> yes, it's I was a little nervous when, that, when the clippers <laughs> came out. <laughs> Lindsay, why this style? We really chose to go sleek on the sides and add height to the top to really elongate her face. Yeah. You know, I the, see that. The way she was wearing it before was really just um, boxing her in mm. and it made her forehead look even smaller. So it just really made her overall face shape look more oval. Why is it important to have the right haircut for the face shape? It really can make or break your overall look. Mm. Um, your, your hair cuts the foundation of your, of your entire look and depending on what you're doing with the cut, it can emphasize areas that you don't want to emphasize. <laughs> that I know, that I know. <laughs> Color, it's funky, it's edgy, it's got that slight metallic sort of look to it without it being purple or silver. Right. It's quite soft. Talk me through that. We really chose to take Courtney a lot lighter than yeah. she was. She's got a beautiful complexion, that nice pearl skin complexion so you know the lighter pearlescent hair really allows again just to add that funk that edgy and um, goes well with her oh her cool gosh. complexion. I love it. <laughs> Take a step forward Courtney so we can really see all the different angles of this haircut. My gosh I love the side profile. I love that. You've really gone quite short at the back there Lindsay. We did. You and know it's easy it's like I said again funky It'll be easy for her to do in the mornings and still, you know, run around with the kids. Maintenance wise, how often does she need to come in to have such a cut? Definitely since we did go quite a bit shorter, you want to come, you know, about once every four weeks okay. to keep up that shape and um, okay. the color, you know, as it grows in four to six weeks. Okay. I think you look fantastic. Well, I want to introduce again our fantastic stylist here, Heidi. How are you? Good. Thank you. So Heidi, talk me through this whole look. Not only has she had a whole new style change with her haircut, <laughs> I'm completely blown away by it. Talk me through the two key points that you were trying to do. You were talking before that, you know, Courtney has an hourglass shaped figure, but you wanted to emphasize that. Talk me through that and yes. how you did that. So there was a reason why we picked the dress and then the belt was key. Um, and that was specifically so we could enhance um, uh -huh. her hourglass figure. You know, the stripes pull her in, um, the belt cinches her right in the right spot to give her a more curvy look. Um, the length keeps it very um, age appropriate, but also very youthful. Mm. Um, and then the accessories, the denim jacket, the color, and then her fun I, earrings. I would never put a denim jacket with that. No, and that's the youthful part. I mean, it just makes it with her awesome haircut, it makes her very edgy. Um, and so it, 
you know, it just kind of dresses it down a little bit. Okay, I absolutely love it. I love the little skull and crossbones on the on the jacket there. Now, you've got the little earrings, they're a little bit of a drop earring, bit fun, they're not a stud, but they're like no. little cameras. They're little cameras. So it kind of brings her whole look together. Um, she's a completely different person now, um, <laughs> from head to toe. Oh, you're beaming here, Courtney. <laughs> How do you feel with the whole look put together? Um, I feel great. It's fun. Um, I kind of, I kind of feel like I have new attitude towards really? things now, and just, I don't know. I, I want to go out, like you know, <laughs> I want to go out anyway. Sometimes being a mom, I'm like, yeah. I gotta get out of the house. But now I'm just like, let's just go. Let's I, you know, rock it let's, out. Let, yeah. Yeah. So. I love that the idea of you, what you're saying is because at 29, you've got a couple of kids. You know, and you are stuck at home. Well, let's not say stuck. You're a mum. You're busy. But the thing is, is you sometimes just pull on the, the, the tracksuit and off your trot. It's like you Absolutely. can't be bothered getting to that next level. <laughs> is this something you could just pull on during the day for yourself? That's not too hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's not too dressy. It is something that I can, I would feel comfortable going to the grocery store yeah. in and I wouldn't feel overdressed. So it's just fun and funky and... Mm, I love I, it. I love it. <laughs> You're so great. I absolutely adore it. Well, guys, I really appreciate you coming in and having a look and seeing what we can do. It's been quite interesting to see how you can transform someone's whole look with just a whole new haircut and fashion as well. I'd like to thank everyone who has helped with Courtney's makeover. She looks fantastic. And I hope you've got some great ideas on how you can mix up your own look back at home there. For more information on the show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv. And I'll see you next week. Next week on The Younger You, we'll meet Natalie, a wife and mother who thought that her bottom needed, well, a little lift. She went to Dr Dunkley to have what is called a Brazilian butt lift. Join us next week to check out her results. <laughs>